Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy 2022. And we are back. We're back. Okay. Live. Um, the weather outside is quite cold, so either you're snuggled or you may very well be, you know, on the road. But thank you very much for joining us this morning. Okay. So we want to start off with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We adore you. We thank you, O God, for the audience that you have given us this evening, O God, this morning, sorry, for us to bring a message to O God. Father, we pray that each person on live, Father God, that they would understand, that they would appreciate, that they would hear and take every word that we say and practice it, oh God. Even help them, even, oh God, to continue on in their marriage, even if they're planning a wedding, oh God, and planning a marriage. Father, we ask that you give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word to deliver it to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So for those who may not know us, uh, my name is Tamara Desmangles. I am the seasoned wives officer of Wife Her, which is Healed, Empowered, Restored. And I am the wife to this guy, Richard, and the mother of two beautiful daughters, Talia and Takaya. So that's that's, you. that's me. And my name is Richard Desmangles. I don't have a position in the wife or ministry. Um, always a co-host to Tamara Desmangles. <laughs> and we have been married for 13 and a half years. Mm -hmm. Um not just married, happily married, got to put that in there. Um, and we truly believe that our marriage is our first ministry and we, we live by that. So without further ado, we are going to jump in to today's chat, which is titled Marriage Planning While Wedding Planning. Marriage Planning While Wedding Planning. While Wedding Planning. So this um topic took us back mm -hmm. took us back to 13 plus years ago so we really had to dig deep um but we trust that what god has placed on us would help you in your journey whether planning a marry a, mar a marriage or already married all right so when we um when we thought about what happens while you plan a wedding, while you plan a marriage, for us, we were, our hearts went straight to the ceremony and what is said, the vows. Um, but in particular, if you've been to weddings, which I'm sure each of us have been to at least one, mm -hmm. um, there is something that the minister, the officiant, the JP says. Yes. And so Richard is going to share that and that. And that for us is what stood out when we were doing our study. So when we search for the words of the, the this part of the ceremony, we got it from www.goodreads.com. And it reads, therefore, marriage is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which two was for which it was initiated in situ in instituted mm -hmm. by God. So we even went deeper and we wanted to understand the words that are used. One in particular, about three in particularly. Right. Unadvisedly, reverently, and deliberately. Yeah. Because we say these words, but do we really have an understanding of what these words mean? We say them in our everyday lives, mm -hmm. but in the context of the quote that we just gave, um, we really wanted to see what that really means. And so, so we want to, um, I'm going to read it again. I'm going to say the, say it again, but I want to read the meanings first. And then while I say it, I'll put the meanings and I'll replace it. 
So unadvisedly, unadvisedly in an unwise or rush manner, reverently, with deep, solemn respect, deliberately, consciously, and intentionally on purpose in a careful and unhurried way. Right. So when we so when we hear the minister say this to the couple who's being married, he's basically saying, therefore, therefore marriage is to be is in, not is not to be entered into in an unwise or rush manner. We could we could just stop right there for a second. Okay. Like unadvisedly, you you can't. You can't rush this marriage process. Seek wise counsel. And then on top of that, it says, but. But with deep, solemn respect. So the word respect basically says that you have to show some type of understanding and respect to marriage. Mm hmm because when you enter into marriage, it's nothing lightly. You have to give it some type of respect because of the institution and it was instituted by God. Right. So if you give respect to marriage, it's like giving respect to God. And if you disrespect marriage, it's like disrespecting God because the, the person who instituted is God. And how do you disrespect? I mean, how do you, how do you enter marriage and then disrespect it? One, or how do you enter marriage and allow people to disrespect your marriage? Like, this is for the couple. This is what is said at the wedding ceremony. And in addition to entering it with deep, solemn respect. You have to enter it consciously and intentionally on purpose. So this isn't something that you bump into. Yeah, this ain't no this isn't the really nilly. The table chair that you miss and buck your toe into and you felt the pain. No. You intentionally plan and you take counsel, you take um great thought into mm -hmm. entering the marriage because your intentions were pure. Well, your intentions should be pure mm -hmm. when you enter into marriage. Right. Okay, and in careful and unhurried way, we can respect the persons who elope. Mm -hmm. We can respect that if that's how they choose. They choose to get my. They choose to get married in a one month time, or we've seen instances where the gentleman will propose with everybody in attendance and say, "Do you want to marry me?" The wife, the the lady will say yes, and then he'll say, okay, so we're getting married now. Go and change into your dress. We could respect that. Those things we don't hit, but we want you to understand that. But even in that, there should be some sort of planning mm -hmm. prior to. So for us, when you proposed to me, there was already discussions had about us getting married that that was already things have already happened prior there was still some preparation and even with this um chat you guys will see what we focus on as it relates to if you do elope or pop up married some of the things that we suggest that you do but if we were to read this with just the definitions it would read something like this Therefore, marriage is not to be entered in unwise or in a rash manner, but with deep, solemn respect, mm -hmm. consciously and intentionally, on purpose, in a careful and unhurried way, and in accordance for which it was instituted by God. Amen. And really and truly, you could you you could stop right there and get a word. You you could stop right, you could just 
stop the whole like if we in do premarital counseling we could stop the whole ceremony and dig into this a whole lot deeper yes um but we will continue and this getting deep yeah yeah we we, we can continue this can be this shifting me away from my notes but I, i'm gonna stick to my notes <laughs> <laughs> um when we think about wedding marriage planning while wedding planning mm -hmm. when we accept the proposal yes we get into wedding planning mode we get into setting the date. We get into um, if it can be a church wedding, if it could be a garden, if it could be a beach, if it could be a destination. I mean, basically, once we get the proposal, once the young man make the proposal and the wife and the young lady accept, mm -hmm. everything shift. Right. Everything shift planning for that particular day. That day, that event. That event. Right. And I think. The same way we take time to call around, mm -hmm. asking for prices on the event, asking for on the, venue, on the venue, asking for prices on the the cake, mm -hmm. asking for prices on the ring, asking for prices on the pictures, the dress, I mean, the dress, the catering, putting together a package for the bridesmaid, the groomsmen, mm -hmm. and on top of that, that would be considered seeking wise counsel. Mm -hmm. So we seek wise counsel because we call our friends and our family who would have already been married yes. or who would have recently gotten married. Yes. And we ask their advice. So what did you do? What did you do differently? What did you, what didn't you do? How did your wedding end up being such a grand event? Or mm -hmm. how did you end up saving? How did you scale back? So we seek wise counsel on planning the wedding but then we don't seek wise counsel on planning the marriage now we want you guys to understand now the wedding is that one day event and one the marriage is, is the, the lifetime. lifetime we don't want to knock the fact that you're planning the wedding because every woman want a princess wedding not but, every no no well most right most want a princess wedding right but we would need to understand that the marriage right. should be a princess marriage too. That's true. That, that is true. Okay. <laughs> that is true. And so we, we, we say, you know, just how we seek wise counsel for planning the wedding, we ought to seek wise counsel and prepare and plan for the marriage. So, we feel that it is crucial, mm -hmm. it is vital mm -hmm. for couples who are wedding planning to marriage plan. And by marriage planning, that is premarital and postmarital counseling. So what is counseling? What is counseling? We've heard this word like so many times counseling counseling everybody want to do counseling so counseling to give advice give professional help mm -hmm. and advice to someone to resolve personal psychological problems recommend a course of action so in the content of marriage and premarital counseling the goals of premarital counseling are and we have and the thing is right 13 years ago, you want to you wanna just share this book with you guys. Share this joke. 13 years ago. Y'all see my book? And y'all see Richie's book? Who looked like they was preparing? So this is the book we use. And we just want to pull out some nuggets out of this book. And the author of this book is Dr. H. Norman, Norman Wright. Wright. And so the book is called So, so You're, you're getting, getting Married. Married. All right. And this is what we use while we were um, planning and a that. wedding mm -hmm. and planning and a marriage. Yes. So page three, the goals of premarital counseling. One is to eliminate as many surprises as possible. So, you know, 
you know, we just be very real when we do these chats. So, mm -hmm. you know, I had to ask, because now this this 13 years later, uh -huh. were there any surprises while we were dating um, and planning for our marriage? Did you learn of any surprises? Um, not so much a surprise, right? But I know, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I, I was surprised about when we first started dating, it it, it didn't take a, take me long to realize it, but um, I always thought you came from a, a married home. I always thought your parents were married because when I first met your parents, I said, hey, Mrs. Stewart, hey, Mrs. Stewart. And you was like, no, she's not a Stewart. She's a Thurston. She's a Thurston. She so was. I was like, so really? my parents cohabitated all of my life. Mm -hmm. um, and so persons just assumed that they were married, mm -hmm. but they weren't. So that was a surprise for Richie, as it is a surprise for many persons. Um, and what for me, a surprise for me was um, how Richard uh, embraced his culture his heritage of being Haitian. Now, my closest of friends are Haitian, um, but he just embraced it differently for me. Not that it was, it wasn't a bad thing, mm -hmm. but I just wasn't, I wasn't used to it. I mean, I just wasn't. Um, and that is something that I loved about him. So that was a, a, a surprise. Um, the next goal of premarital counseling is to identify possible problem areas, right? Mm -hmm. So when I asked him this, he, he reckoned his brain can't think of anything back then that he says would have been a problem area. So, you know, me, I I could think of something that was a problem area or mm -hmm. that could have been a problem area, mm -hmm. uh, which was, if you know Richie, he is Mr. Sociable, Mr. Hugger, Mr. Happy-Go-Lucky. Um, if you see him out and you mistake him for his twin... He can hug you and then he can tell you after the fact that it ain't really me, it's the next one. Mm -hmm. So that is something I had to, like we had to talk about it, but I had to get used to because but that was his personality. That, no, I wasn't used to that. I wasn't used to that. I just wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so if I was insecure in who I was, mm -hmm. that would have been an issue. Because right now we have a daughter who is a hugger. Yes. You know? So, yeah, you just ain't used to it, you know? So for me, that was something that could have very well been a problem. So you address it like you let them know how you feel. And then the third goal of marital counseling was to, it is to learn marital skills. So, you know, when we decide that we are going to enter into a certain field, mm -hmm. um, we go and we do the necessary courses. We go and we get the degrees. Uh, we learn all these different skills. When we, we are at work, yeah, when we are at work, if they say we have to learn a new skill in order to do a process, we do that. Yes. And well, so for marriage. Yeah, so for marriage. The same effort you put in your um, professional life mm -hmm. is the same effort you should put in your marriage. If you want to understand how to resolve conflicts, um, this is why we go to, pre to premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. If you want to understand how to avoid um, conflict, because it's best to avoid than to try to resolve it. These are the things, the skills that you should learn. And even... Skills of communication, right? Skills of understanding when to listen, 
and when to speak because a lot of times um, we tend to speak before we even understand um, to provide a better response because we we okay. jump in the conversation okay. before it's time for us to even talk. So what marital skill did you learn? Well, I, I be quiet. I listen. I listen. I be quiet. I mm -hmm. listen. I tend to be quiet because, um, I mean, it's not a saying, but it's true. You have two ears and you have one mouth, so you listen more and you talk less. So that was a marital skill you learned? That was a marital skill. And I think every man, let's, let's, let's stop trying to say we the macho man and we want to talk and we want to talk over the wife while she's trying to express what she's going through or she's trying to express what you did wrong. But yet you're the man, you're the macho one. You want to say, no, 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 that was not wrong. No, be quiet and listen. And once you listen, I guarantee you, once you hear what, she's, what she is saying, you'll be able to rationalize and say what was going on in your mind at that time, why you acted the way you acted or why you responded the way you responded because sometimes we respond in a manner that is not healthy that is not good and it um we tend to think that it doesn't hurt or it doesn't put the wife um at a place where she's not at ease mm. what we say we have to be careful what we say okay okay all right so that that so so listening was a marital skill that i know that he learned um, and he also shared that he learned how to pay attention. And I guess that comes with listening, but no, for him, the paying attention, but let me talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> so I start correct. When I said pay attention mm -hmm. after, um, from 2000, from August 2nd, 2008, 13 years now, mm -hmm. there were some changes. Mm -hmm in the in the way in terms of the changes on how she wants to be dealt with in terms of how she wants me to communicate with her mm -hmm. changes in terms of how she um she wants to be loved Th changes in terms of how um what's more priority mm -hmm. because after you have the children things change so pay attention to the changes and the life of your wife. Pay attention to her growth. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to her behaviors. So I pay attention. And now, that's and that's and that's in any marriage. It's mm -hmm. not. We're not saying that's specific to one individual. Because as a wife, you should be paying attention to your spouse. And so, for either spouse, um, a marital skill that we can share is that you pay attention to the changes, to the growth, mm -hmm. because again, your marriage will go through different seasons and you have to be aware of those seasons or the season that you're currently in, mm -hmm. as well as uh, the art of communication. And we only just touched on one, which was listening. Mm -hmm. um, then they're speaking, you know. So that was a marital skill that you learn in premarital counseling. Another goal, the final goal of premarital counseling is to teach couples to be realistic, right? Mm -hmm. Set the expectation. Yes. From the onset, like, like, don't become so consumed in planning the wedding and the day that you put the blinders on and then you decide to take them off after the wedding is over because the problem or the concern or the issue was there before the wedding. And what happens is in marriage, it only magnifies what is there. So, 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 so I want to say in terms of what, um, the realistic thing in terms of you and I, mm -hmm. because when I, when I was home with my mother, mm -hmm. My mother would clean. Mm -hmm. My mother would cook it every day. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I think, okay, so when they get married, I got a wife who would clean. No. Cook every day. No. So those are the things like, I mean, like if that's what you wanted, then you should have stayed home. Yeah, you should have stayed home. You or stay or home. marry your mommy. 
Yeah. So you could get your cooked meal every day. Yeah. And then when you come home, you can ask mommy, mommy, you want to iron the shirt for me. I ain't yeah. got wait tomorrow. You can iron the shirt for me or iron the pants for me. Mommy would do it because mommy, yeah, but my mommy would do it because mommy is a mommy who wants to make sure her boys then um, straight. She yes. make sure they always look nice. And because she was the only person we had throughout our entire life. We right. had no father. All we have is, the, is our mother. So mm-hmm. she would have done those things with no hesitation. Right. However, if that is what you are accustomed to, these are the conversations you have before marriage. Because you don't want to go into marriage thinking that this is what marriage is because this is what my mom did. Uh-huh. Or this is what marriage is because this is what my dad did. My dad, I mean... You may marry someone whose dad pays all the bills in the house. Mm-hmm. That that so when they come together, they're not expecting to pay any bills. My 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 daddy's cover all the bills, so mm-hmm. why I have to pay bills? So these are the things you discuss, you and that's just me. that's just a touch mm-hmm. of setting the expectation. Setting the expectation could be like. How much times you planning on hitting the sheets? <laughs> she was saying, uh-huh. Like you trying to make this an everyday occurrence, a twice a day occurrence. Like what 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 what, what we doing? Mm-hmm. You know, these are the things you have to discuss. Like I am accustomed to going on vacation every year. I'm accustomed to getting my hair done every two weeks. And like these things you discuss, you don't. You, you don't see that this could be a potential issue and then you wait until after I do to address the issue. Yes. If it's a cut, don't put the bandaid on and pray that it heal. Let's heal it. Let the scar come and let's move forward. Yeah. And we ain't trying to make the cut any deeper or create a new cut. No. Let, let's just heal. Let's just come heal, whole, empowered, restored. Let, let's Amen. do that. Let's do that. Amen. So in, in a nutshell or to just repeat the goals, one is to eliminate as many surprises as possible. Two is to identify possible problem areas. Three, to learn marital skills. And four, would be to touch cup, teach couples to be realistic. Amen. All right. So after that, um, as much as we encourage and suggest, um, we do suggest premarital counseling, whether individual or as group um, group counseling. You share your strategies, you create strategies more so as to how we're going to minimize conflict, yes. challenges, because these things happen. But if we already have a, a solution that we can lean on when the challenges arise, or we already know how to address a challenge mm-hmm. or combat a challenge, we are so much further ahead than waiting for the challenge to come and we just fucking heads. Mm-hmm. Agree? Agree. All right. So for us, for the Des Mangles, people always say to us, you know, I admire your marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it that you guys do differently? Or how come y'all always seem so happy and, you know, y'all always laughing and talking and joking or whatever. Mm -hmm. But for us, I always tell people, outside of God being the head of our marriage, we firmly stand on, if it had not been for premarital counseling and postmarital counseling, which is what we did, up to our first year anniversary, um, I think the outcome could have been different with our marriage. So pre-marital, I mean, post-marital counseling. 
post my the consonant is um we want to shout out our pasta yes our pasta our our pastor saint your pastor alfred stewart at the new mount zion missionary baptist church whoop, whoop, down mm -hmm. in the deep south who encouraged us to yes. continue after marriage because after the wedding then what right this is where postmarital counseling allows you to use it before you use lose it right which is the wisdom the knowledge that you would have gotten in pre-marital counseling postmarital counseling supports you to gives you provide you with the support you need adjusting into this new life mm -hmm. Because when you go into it, right, the first month is smooth sailing. You think you got it down. Ah, second month, smooth sailing. Then the third month, because the first and second month, she's doing all the nice things, everything that you thought marriage was supposed to be. And then the third month, you stop, not her, you stop doing what you were supposed to do. And then you say, did we miss something? Did we go wrong somewhere? So postmodern counseling, when you go back into postmodern counseling, you have these discussions with your um, pastor, or even if it's a group session, you mm -hmm. have this discussion and you share with each other and you um, get their feedback, you give your feedback. Because now you in it. Exactly. You in it. This postmodern is, it, 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 it's now the truth of marriage mm -hmm. versus the wedding day experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would hope to say that persons who would have done premarital counseling that like us, they are encouraged to do postmarital. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, it's it's up to the the couple what they decide to do. Mm -hmm. But we are thankful and we stand on that postmarital made a difference because the reality sets in. You're back to the norm. Mm -hmm. You all the time that you spend planning the wedding, you have all this free time now. And then you realize, like, this dude always gonna be on me. Mm -hmm. And I was living on my own. Exactly. And this dude always happy. And it's take me like to get into the groove of the day to be happy. So now we 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 in this, and I, I didn't know it was all of this. But postmarital gives you that support mm -hmm. where you can share, mm -hmm. where you can have accountability. Exactly. Where That's you where can I mean. pull from other couples mm -hmm. who have also who are also now married and can share in their experience. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, I don't believe experience is the best teacher. I believe other people's experience is the best teacher. Exactly. Why should we have to experience something? When we and can learn from a different couple who has already experienced it and overcome. That's because our um our journey in life, what we go through should be for others. And our testimony should be able to allow them to overcome whatever they go through. Because we want to share our marital um uh, if there's struggles, we want to share it. Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't want to keep it to ourselves because at the end of the day, um, someone may be going through the exact same thing and they need that deliverance and you are holding it back because God already delivered you from it. Right. God already allowed you to come um, a victor and not a victim mm -hmm. and you're now victorious. So it's for you to go to that other individual and share it with them. This is why I post my other counseling. Even if you don't do it as a group, you could do it as a couple. Right. You could do it with another couple and mm -hmm. share with that other couple and tell them, say, oh, we are going through that. Eh? Oh, we went through that too. This mm -hmm. is what we did. Mm -hmm. And this is how we overcome it. And we will suggest that you guys do the same thing. So post marital counseling, it's... we will suggest it just as much as pre-marital counseling. Exactly. Because in marriage, um, marriage tends to bring the scripture of first Corinthians 13 verses four and seven, four through seven, it, it tends to bring it to life very quickly, right? So first Corinthians 13 verse four through seven says, love is patient, love is kind. 
and this is the scripture that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in truth. It always protects, always trusts, mm -hmm. always hopes, and always perseveres. And this is taken from the Life in the Spirit Study Bible. And then when we when, when we read the footnote, it says, this section describes love as an activity and a behavior, not just an inner feeling or, or motivation. The various aspects of love included here characterize God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Every believer must seek to grow in this kind of love. So if we place this love as a believer in the context of our marriage, love is not saying, I love you. No. I love you too, you know. Uh -huh. Love is a action. Love is a behavior. Like this is, this is marriage is my first ministry. This is Christ and his church. Amen. That's powerful right there. So it is important that you 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 seek wise counseling before and during. And I see a comment here that says mostly it's discontin discontinued because the support is not free. And the truth of the matter is everyone um if you're looking to do professional counseling, paid counseling, I understand that, I get that. And I always tell people, make sure the professional that you seek is someone who believes in the same faith or moral mm -hmm. compass that you do. Yes. Because somebody could have letters behind their name because they are educationally deemed a professional, mm -hmm. but you can have a professional within your circle, whether it's your church circle or even your family of your friends circle, who can give you advice, who can give you sound advice. But, but And someone who's trustworthy. And someone who's trustworthy. But again, as a believer, the Holy Spirit will lead you to or send someone to you to give sound advice. Like we have people in our circle who aren't deemed professionals mm -hmm. in counseling who hold us accountable. Exactly. They hold us accountable. Now I'm thankful that our church home was able to counsel us Post after, uh -huh. yeah, after. And, and, and I hope that that is something that churches do without charge. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's, that's, that's a conversation, another conversation. Yes, um, and even within counseling and premarital counseling, there are a number of key points that persons will, oh dear, she said I meant church. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I promise you that there are churches who do not charge for postmarital counseling. I promise you, we are a recipient mm -hmm. where we did not get charged. But that's, um, another, topic that's another topic. Yeah. yeah, that's another topic. Um, within counseling as well, you counseling will also hit on key points. Key points such as communication, finances, intimacy, sex, and family life. These are things that counseling hits on. Mm -hmm. And so even though we're not going to elaborate more on those, if you have premarital and postmarital counseling, I guarantee you that when those topics are touched, they expand so much 
more. Yes. Would you agree? I agree. Um, so that is really our primary um, advice when planning a wedding and planning marriage. Mm -hmm. Premarital, postmarital. There's also marriage seminars, yes. workshops. workshops. And sometimes those aren't free. So, I mean, it's a good thing that you should um, consider to invest in your marriage. In your marriage. Because like the, like, the, like the user mentioned, some things aren't free in terms of the postmarital counseling, but the seminars, the workshop, um, if you have to invest in your marriage, I think you should consider it, especially if you want to save your marriage, if you want to continue being married. Mm -hmm. Because when you invest it in your wedding, you yep. have a budget. Yep. So your marriage, I don't think there should be a budget for your marriage. No. Not to save it or just, yeah, not to make sure that it lasts a lifetime. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't just as much time as we invested, as much money as we invested, invested in the wedding, in the wedding, let's put that into our marriage as well. So we have no problem. You know, we'll go, if we decide, okay, we're on the health run, we'll go to the food store and, you know, eating healthy and cheap. Nope. We are below hundreds of dollars in the food store and then if there's a workshop or a seminar happening and they say okay it's a hundred per person we won a, a whole hundred and there's a church doing it there's a religious group doing it for them invested your invest marriage, in your marriage. And, in your and as best you can when you do do workshops and seminars go as a couple yes don't go by yourself because i could tell you one thing I mean, if the wife want you to be swayed in a different manner, she'll come home and tell you everything what the what the get what the speaker said that you should have done or that you should be doing, and forget the part what she's supposed to do. I'm just putting that there. I don't know how much we. I'm, I mean, in terms of the wives, because you know, wives they always want things to be done their way. I mean, you can hit me if I'm wrong, but tell me, let me know. We don't always want it done our way. No. No. I think so. I, I don't. Okay, then. I Let's digress. Let's I, I don't. <laughs> That's a different topic, okay? I don't. But what we are saying is, where you can go to a seminar, go, go together. As, go as a couple. Because how I receive it as a wife, mm -hmm. even if I try to relay it to him, it's not going to be the same as if he were there getting it from the speaker. Exactly. Directly. Because everyone processes differently okay but unfortunately the reality is women would go to to the marriage workshop over men mm -hmm. they'll go with another married woman and yeah they come back and say the, the man say this that and that so and that. then encourage your brothers to go together with their spouse mm -hmm. so the message when you get that message you like so you say all that about the man and he ain't say nothing but the woman? Yeah. And that, that and right there is going to discourage the husband from ever going out. Yeah. From ever going. Yeah. So guys, um, go along with your wives to these, mar these marital seminars so you will get the information firsthand and you will take notes firsthand. Take, take notes on your own. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's, that's pretty much the first half, right? We're going to run through some questions that we feel you should pose to your, your spouse or your soon-to-be spouse, your significant other, before I do. And this is just, this is just the primary start. Like, it could go so much bigger than these questions, mm -hmm. right? But the first question that came to mind is when we get married as a believer or mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. where will we be worshiping? And for us, right, I think the choosing where we worship was an easy transition for us. Yes. The reason is because whilst we dated, we visited each other church. When I would visit her, her church person would say, 
you don't have a church room, eh? Mm-hmm. And then when she visit my church, Purple Acts, if she doesn't have a church room, but we will visit the Bible study together, her Bible study, her church Bible study, my church Bible study, Sunday morning worship at her church or Sunday morning worship at my church. Right. And we are alternate. So it was easy for us to, to make a decision in terms of where we um, would have worship. Now for her, um, I don't know. Was it easy for you? Because you know, you bred and born and Christian, Christian and Mary and my church. Um, it was an easy transition. And so we encourage persons, if that is, if you are doing the traditional route, which is to follow your husband, it makes it easier because you would have already formed relationships with that church. Mm-hmm. So we literally did week for week. Mm-hmm. One week it was his church, one week it was my church, one week it was his Bible study church. So it made the transition easier so that when I got married, when we got married, I already knew um, the lay the lay of the land at his church for the most part. I'd already established friendships at his church. So it wasn't a hard transition. It wasn't a pull for me to say, I don't want to go. You know what I mean? But again, because we've heard stories of some wife kicking and screaming to leave their church. Right. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. But again, everybody's marriage is different because you may marry into somebody who is heavily in ministry at their church. So that's another point. And that's another point. If you are in ministry, do you intend to remain be, remain in ministry? Not saying that you leave the ministry, right. but let us let us go to a scripture in the Bible. A scripture that was read to us in premarital counseling. Mm-hmm. And listen, we we learned so much in premarital counseling. The scripture, and we're not saying again, we're not saying leave your ministry, but we are asking, do you intend to remain in that role? For the first year. For the first year. Or for the first two years. Or uh-huh. however. How are we going to now communicate this? And what was shared to us was Deuteronomy 24, verse 5. One verse. It reads, If a man has recently married, he must not be sent to war or have any other duty laid on him. For one year, he is to be free to stay at home and bring happiness Amen. to happiness. the wife he has married. Deuteronomy 20, 24, verse 5. And when that scripture was read... So, so basically God instruct you to take a year off... To bond. To bond. With your wife. To build this relationship. To now, this is where the foundation part is being established this is where you build the foundation to make sure that um the foundation is poured perfectly there's Mm -hmm. no cracks in the foundation except Mm -hmm. the concrete is cured Mm -hmm. you need a whole year for that wow this 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 message is powerful so god basically said make sure you have your wife happy for the first year so in my case Mm -hmm. right I was heavily involved in Toastmasters. So oh, Jesus, Toastmasters. Every week, Toastmasters, I prepare for a speech. I prepare to be the the the, the Toastmaster chair. At, at, at one week, I prepare to be the timekeeper. I was actually the sergeant of arm. I was VP of relations, VP of membership. So I was heavily involved in, in, in this Toastmaster business. So I had to sit down. I said, you know what? Those masters for me, one year let me stop. And after that, I became a ghost master. But anyhow, that's my <laughs> <laughs> But again, everyone's revelation of the scripture is different. And everybody's life is different. Mm-hmm. But what you want to do is have the conversation. Exactly. Because what you don't want to do is be particularly us as believers in ministry. You don't want to be in ministry and you are neglecting your spouse. You don't want to be in ministry 
and your spouse is now resenting church. Like, like, and this is how we, we get to a place of how did, how did that marriage in church end up in divorce? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some people always we, think it's because the husband or the wife stepped out of them. Out of marriage. marriage. Because sometimes, sometimes it ain't the, enough. It's the ministry. Sometimes we, um, we can be, we can be so deep. And we can't be able to pour into everyone else's life and we neglect the person right next to us. And then the, I want you guys to understand what we're saying now. We're not saying to put God in the back burner. No. We're just saying that the church at this time, your, your marriage is before church because God will always be the head. God is first, your marriage, then church. You understand? So that's how it goes. And, and so we want to make sure you have this conversation. This is an important conversation. You setting the expectation, you being yes, realistic. This is an important conversation. Because you may marry the spouse who supports your ministry or what you do in ministry, whether you, um, you're head of the women's department, you're head of the usher board, you head of the youth. You may have a, uh, a wife who says, you know, I'm going to come on board with this you. Mm-hmm. You understand? Now, there may be boundaries in place where we can agree that this will be a once a week um, event or however, but you have to use that first year of marriage wisely, delicately, mm -hmm. and that's not just even bonding time with your spouse. Now, the two, the two shall become one. This is now you establish a, establishing a relationship as a couple with God. Amen. Amen. You know, so these are the questions that you ask. Mm -hmm. On top of that, you ask the money matters question. Money and finances. That's, that's always a hot topic always for marriage. Always a hot topic. Discuss how accounts will be situated, either joint or separate. Joint or separate. Joint or separate. And, and it's so funny, right? There's nothing wrong with having separate accounts. Nothing is wrong with having separate account, guys. <laughs> Reason why is because we've just recently learned that a couple who has, has been, been married for almost a hundred years and they don't have a, a joint account. account and their marriage is smooth. I mean, they're happy. That's how they operate. And the comment the one of the couple, one of the um, partners made, the, the, what the husband or the wife made was like, this is how we had it for so long and this it's been, and it's working. This is what works for us. And then I say, so why? So it's like, well, I mean, if we had it any other way, we wouldn't have been here together <laughs> right now. <laughs> so basically these discussions about money management, it really has to be, um, it has to sit down it and it's not, addressed. and it's not like you talk about it and you take it. Right. No, you sit down, you discuss and you express your reasons why I want us to have a joint account, or you express your reasons why I don't want to have a joint account with you right. because I know your behaviors <laughs> and, and I want to make sure I protect my family at the end of the day. I want to make sure I have and, some money. And then on top of that, you have, these are conversations you have continually throughout marriage because behaviors change. Mm -hmm. People grow. So initially I may not want to have a joint account with you because I, you, you, you you spend money based on how you feel. You see something in the store and you just swipe, swipe, swipe. Five years into marriage, hmm, hmm. This is this you is change. Mm -hmm. You don't do that no more. You know you've grown, but now we get luck to having a joint account. Have discussions about how finances will be paid. Are we gonna do the husband is gonna cover one hundred percent and the wife save and put it aside? Are we going to do 80-20? Mm -hmm. Are we going to do 60-40? Have these conversations. Could be 50-50. Let's just go straight down the line. You know, have these conversations. As as money increases, then we could possibly shift. Yes. So like for us, when we first got married, we paid the mortgage 50-50. Now, Richard pays the mortgage by himself. Amen. Amen. He think he can swing. That's yeah. another conversation. That's another conversation. Because when I sit down with my boys and I tell them what I used to, they say, you used to do all of that? All of that. 
Are you getting swing? Hold on, hold on. you put gas in our car too? Oh my God. You pay the phone bill? I'm like, yeah, you don't do that. But she tried to put one car, she put gas in her own car. It's okay. But again, you have to find the balance that works for you. Yes. We can only give suggestions because the blueprint of our marriage is going to be totally different, different from the blueprint of yours. You didn't marry Tamara. You didn't marry Richard. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your blueprint is going to be, it's going to be unique yeah. to you. Yes. Home is happy. And I like keeping it like that. If I have to put gas every day, I'll put gas every day. Home is happy. But see on the <laughs> flip side of that, let me just, let me go back to that. On the flip side, mm -hmm. are your boys getting what you getting? What you talking about? What you, oh, no, we ain't mean jump to that party. You, you jumping you, far, but they getting what oh, you, no, you skipping, you skipping. We I ain't getting what we you got getting. A flow. We got a flow. See, <laughs> this is what I talking about. <laughs> so if we getting what he all be all around, <laughs> all around. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, let's carry on. We skip it. So number four, intimacy. Intimacy. You have these questions on intimacy. Intimacy does not mean sex. There is emotional intimacy. There is intellectual intimacy that needs to be stimulated. Mm -hmm. There is ex ex experiential intimacy. And there is spiritual intimacy. All of these areas need to be stimulated daily. And let's go back to the intellectual uh, part of it. Mm -hmm. And why I say that? I'm not saying that um, men don't hold intellectual conversations with their wives. Mm -hmm. But there was something said to me one time, the, the, the biggest organ that needs the most um, intimacy, or if I could use the word orgasmic experience, mm -hmm would be the brain. The mind. Yep. The mind. Yep. Um, because if you could have a conversation intellectually with your wife or even your um even whilst you're dating, mm -hmm. I mean the wife would be like or the the husband would be blown away. Wow. This dude ain't only just tall, dark and handsome. He's smart too. I will be a plus. So you, um, <laughs> you laugh at that? <laughs> sorry. So that'll be a plus for yes. you guys. Have intellectual conversation. And, and it's really too about being vulnerable. Like mm -hmm. I should know that when I'm not my best, my husband, I can share that. And if I don't share that, he is able to feel that and sense that. And that's where the emotional intimacy comes in. intimacy comes in so intimacy we gotta plan a whole um uh, i think that another session another session on intimacy mm -hmm. and then from intimacy there's sex sex now and you so, can jump the part what you wanted to say about you need thing. to have these conversations about sex mm -hmm. you need to know if your spouse gonna be restricted to the bedroom or they little adventurous and they can, they can, they can do a quickie on the lunch hour. You need to have these conversations because if your spouse is restricted to the bedroom and then you bust a quickie situation, he may feel, or she may feel where this come from. Mm, Jesus. You was talking to somebody, you and your friends was collaborating, like where this come from all of a sudden. All of a so sudden. you need to know. No surprises. This is, this is what you could possibly expect. Yeah, you please. could possibly expect when you walk in the door, things is things, especially when you don't have no germs. Especially when you have no germs. You could expect I could be a Jane and you can be a... Tarzan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But you have these conversations. And you have the conversations. These are Our continual. next conversation we have, right, doing sex, right? We're having the sheets um, up over us. We're having the lights, lights on. Lights on, lights off. Like, what we doing? What we doing? What are you doing? You have these conversations. And even, be, even before 
we get to marriage, you need to have that wedding night, expectation, conversation. Mm -hmm. That needs to be had because some people end up being super tired. tired. Staying in the mood. And it's the marriage. The marriage is not consummated unless mm -hmm. you have sex. That's my belief. That's that's Richard's belief. That's my belief. So if you have, we a, have a trend. significant other. We have a trend, guys. <laughs> Everywhere we go to, we go home and we say, platform, we have to consummate the marriage. Just in case they didn't do it. Just in case they didn't do it, we could consummate it for them. Because that, I know they're tired. I know my boy tired. He been walking up and down, hailing everybody. The wife tired because she be in them heels. So you know what? We do you all a favor. Let's consummate the marriage for them, okay? So that's what we do. That's a trend. Honestly, we do that. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately, so <laughs> if you have a husband or a significant other fiance who is like a Richard, you need to understand what his expectation is. Mm -hmm. He ain't care. I, I, so my analogy, be, my analogy, my analogy was, my analogy was, <laughs> what happens if you have an evening wedding, you party all night, and you're tired? Because this thing is, it needs to be done on the day, not the morning after. It needs to be on the day. So yeah. what if your reception goes straight into the morning? Straight into the morning. He wants you to leave the reception. Do what you got to do. And then come back. And come back if you want to. Or stay and lay there. He, he, that, just, just, just. It's almost 12 midnight. Guys, we'll be back. Y'all carry on. We need to consummate the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be back. So set the expectation. Mm -hmm. Set the expectation. And while you do that, Ms. pray Spindle for me. Was, Ms. Spindle wants to send us an um, invitation to our marriage. Thank you. We, we'll be there. <laughs> I'll consummate it for you. <laughs> Oh, y'all, please pray for me. Pray, 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 pray for me. Okay. So after that, I agree with you. Ain't no cover back, LaDonna. That's it. Curtains, that, that finish. And you we going to be like Sammy and Ian, and I'm going to put you all on blast. They gone missing. You ask for them at the reception. Oh, they done gone. Reception still going on. They go gone, gone. Mm -hmm. Now, I know if... You know, um, Sammy had intentions of coming back, <laughs> but day was gone <laughs> and reception was still going on. <laughs> we enjoyed their reception. <laughs> um, you also want to discuss short and long term personal goals. Yes. Um, we didn't hit the hour, but we, we just about done. Um, you want to you want to talk about these things. You want to talk. You want to you want to discuss if your intention is to go back to school. To school. You wanted to talk change. career changes. You want to go into a small business, be an entrepreneur. Right. Because these are the conversations you must have because it also affects finances. Yep. It affects finances and you want to make sure that um is this gonna um take away from what we have planned for the next five years? Because the finances that we have planned, okay, we want to start up um build a build a home. Mm -hmm. But you want to take it, take the same money that we built that we're saving. To invest in a business is this business gonna really bring in money as fast as we need it to bring in mm -hmm. or is this startup is gonna take a while to grow so these conversation you we have discuss you have then you also discuss parenting style if it is that you intend on procreating mm -hmm. you discuss these things do you believe in banning the tree while it's young mm -hmm. do you believe and giving time out giving time out or do you believe in um like what what method is is is, is your discipline how do you discipline mm -hmm. you know and then also you want to discuss their education their education do have children do they go to my alma mater or do they go to your alma mater good thing is we went to the same school so yeah we did graduate from the same school so we didn't have no question there mm -hmm. but you may have a school that you DM, you know, you have some families who only send their children to a particular high school for graduation. Yeah. That may not be something that one spouse is interested. They may not be, you know, they may not feel the school is where it was years ago, mm -hmm. but these are the conversations you have. Um, you talk about 
I mean, you should talk about, you should notice where we can live after this wedding. Mm -hmm. Are we going to pay rent? Are we going to straight into a mortgage? Straight into a mortgage. Are we going to stay with the in-laws for a while? Are we going to stay with in-laws? You know what I mean? Have these conversations because they make a difference in your marriage. And then as deep as these questions are, we have some trivial questions that you need to have an understanding of before walking into marriage. Because even though they are trivial, for some, it's a big deal. So, do you, do you put the bread on top of the fridge or in the fridge? So was it AC temperature? AC temperature. <laughs> do you, because, you know, I sleep with the AC on and the ceiling fine, but I can be under the sheets. You have these conversations. Do you intend on stopping by your parents or your siblings every day in our marriage? Do you keep the condiments in the cupboard or the fridge? Mm -hmm. the ketchup, like, the hot sauce, the mustard. These, the these, these conversations you need to have. Hard grits or, or soft, soft grits. grits. <laughs> White grits or yellow grits. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. Like... Do you make up your bed every day? And and some people may think this um, this is trivial and this is not important. What about the brand of shopping in terms of products? Do we go for Kellogg's cornflakes or like the cornflakes I love, the high pop, the store mm. brand, sure fine, tastes so good. No. Which one we do? We doing the, the name brand Kellogg's or we doing the post cereal? Which one? And some products you just can't skim on. I can't, you know, you can't, the laundry products, you can't skim on. You mm -hmm. can't go cheap. Mm -hmm. I, 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 these, these are the things you need to know. And if you were like me, um, I was on my own. So I already had like a certain flow. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, what were other conversations? Oh, so you rinse out the tub after you finish bathing. Or the shower, which is do? Do you make up the bed? Yes, I don't make up the bed. That's why you give me the side eye. I don't do that. But this is the conversation. Do you sleep with the TV on? I don't sleep with the TV on. You don't? No. TV sleep whilst I sleep it. Yeah. So we put the TV on, put the airports in our ass because I sleep in. Mm -hmm. I got to deal with the light, but at least I ain't got no sound. But then shortly thereafter, the DV watching him. He ain't watching the DV. <laughs> Say no hands, please. <laughs> <laughs> Do you eat leftovers? That's another big one. Mm -hmm. Some people don't eat leftover. They want a fresh meal every fresh day. meal every day. What do you consider a meal? Because I could give you some craft dinner and tuna salad and throw some sweet pepper in that and bang, bang, boom. And That's the mood. No, we need to sprinkle the parsley. <laughs> but this is the conversation you need to have. These are uh, the, conver the little things that irritate you in marriage. Yeah. Do you hang the bra? Do you hang your bra? on the doorknob or on the bed or on the, the front, the drawer knob. Like, do you do that? Or you just, um, well, we have the hook over the, the door. Mm -hmm. Something, I mean, these conversations you may think is trivial, but trust me, it could grow into a major um, discourse argument resentment resentment but these are important with all seriousness we need to have these conversations and we even need to have these conversations in this re in this day and age that we are in with the pandemic another conversation to have is working remote mm -hmm. who working remote who working remote if your job allow you to work remote well it's deemed that you're going to be working remote but no question no question. Because this is a big one for us. Yes. Who are you in remote? And anybody who has worked remote with children, that's a different situation. Have these conversations. 
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yes. The menstrual cycle moods. Yeah. You got to have them conversations on them days. I want to talk. I want to cuddle. I am my own little bubble. Give me a minute. I can come down. Amen. Amen. So I think we've done a lot. Yeah. We've hit a lot. We've hit a lot. We've hit a lot. And I'm sure that um, you guys will pick out the nuggets that you need to place on your table, um, to place in your marriage to have laugh, the conversation have the conversations and move forward because our aim is to make sure that every marriage um is successful right successful everybody should win everybody should win and we're I mean, not i don't want to i don't want to um pick up the slogan from from no we ain't gonna pick from, up that slow shit that slow, but that's everybody slogan. wins <laughs> <laughs> everybody wins we but for us on top of my marriage is my first ministry. We don't just want to say that we are a light for godly marriages, but we want to say that we are a light for happy godly marriages. Cause ain't nothing like being deep and we ain't happy. Amen. It don't make sense. You know, so that is us, and we're gonna end with a, uh, just a, a a reading from from our premarital counseling book. Uh huh. So it goes like this: the decision to marry is one of the three most important decisions you will ever make in life. The other two are your life's vocation and your relationship with Jesus Christ. The more extensive the preparation for marriage the greater the potential will be for fulfillment of your hopes and And dreams. dreams. Okay. So thank you. Thank you everybody for attending our session. Thank you. We appreciate you. We thank you for the support, the wife of ministry, shout out to Zemi and shout out to my brother, Ian Stewart. They keep us in the background, Ian, but we are there to support our wives in this ministry. You in the light. I am in the light. light. You see what my shirt say? Usher. Yeah, you ushering <laughs> us into the presence. That's your job as the priest. Yeah. Before we go, we do want to remind our listening audience and those on the replay that we um, at Wife Her, we will be having Galentine vibes. Let me see if we can get this on the screen. Okay. All right. So that's happening. No, I think Zemi. Oh, Jemmy Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Close that little. Okay. So we have Galentine vibes happening on the 17th. <clears throat> we do have a free ticket to give away today. So we are asking if you can share the four goals of premarital counseling, we will reach out to you and give you a ticket to Galentine's. They're They're gonna put it in the comments. So the first person who can tell us or retype. The goals of premarital counseling. Yeah. I wasn't gonna read it, but if they wanna answer somebody can WhatsApp me and I give them the answer. Like, anyway. like my sister right now, who won, she go WhatsApp me. Okay. So the first person who can give <laughs> us the four goals that we listed for premarital counseling, you will win a ticket to Galentine's. We thank you so much for listening on the live and those who will watch it on the replay. We trust that you will be blessed. You guys have an awesome Saturday and a fabulous. That's cheating. 2022. <laughs> <laughs> we love you.